Hey everyone! Previously we made a video on how to use geometry nodes to point instanced objects in a specific direction. Geometry nodes have changed a lot since then, so let's take a look at how we can do the same thing post Blender 3.0. But before we can set up our geometry node system, we need to make an object that we can instance multiple times and then point at our desired location. So I'm going to make an arrow. The exact shape of your object doesn't really matter. The only thing that's important is that the object starts at the origin, is one unit long, and points in the negative direction. You can use any object of any size and direction if you want, but you'll need to do more math in the geometry node system to make it function correctly. Now you can disable the visibility of the arrow object and create an object to instance our many arrows upon. I'm just going to use a plane. If you want a large plane, make sure to do all the transforms in edit mode. If you scale in object mode, your instance objects will be scaled up as well. That should be good, so let's set up our geometry nodes. Go into the geometry node editor and click new here, which will actually add a geometry node modifier to the object. Create some room in between these nodes, add an instance on points node. Now while hovering your mouse over the arrow object in the outliner, hold down shift and click drag the arrow object into the geometry node editor to add an object info node preloaded with the arrow object. Connect the geometry socket to the instance socket. This will instance an arrow object on every vertex in the object that contains the geometry nodes. If you'd like to have the arrows randomly placed, add a distribute points on faces node here. And probably adjust the settings. Lowering the density will decrease how many instances show up. Also switching to Poisson Disk gives you the option to set a minimum distance between instances, which is handy for making sure things stay nicely spaced. I'm done with this node for now, which can be collapsed with this drop down arrow. So now we need a location for our arrows to point. You can have this randomly assigned, manually input the location, or my favorite, use an empty. So let's place an empty somewhere in our scene. and select on the plane object again. Shift drag the empty and plane into the geometry node editor. Add an align Euler to vector node. What's a Euler? Oh, it's a Swiss mathematician's last name. Euler is probably how you say it. Euler. Well, wouldn't have called that. Oh, there's a British. Euler. Huh. Also add a vector math node. Switch the math node to subtract and connect the location of our two objects to it. Put the plane first and the empty second. Now connect to the vector input here. And connect up these two rotation sockets. How we currently have it set up rotates our arrows in the direction from our plane's origin to the empty. If you want the arrows to point based off of their individual locations, add a position node and switch it to the plane's location. Now each arrow points at the empty. There is one issue, however. If your object origin isn't at 0, 0, it'll still act as if it is. To fix this, we need to add the arrow position to the object's location. So duplicate the vector math node, drop it here, switch to add, and connect the plane location. Now it works no matter where it is in your scene. You may want to scale your instance objects, which you can do manually here. But it's also possible to have the scale based off the empty's distance from the plane. Duplicate a vector math node, Switch to distance, find the distance between this output and the empty location, then connect this value to the scale field. And now every arrow scales to touch the empty. If you want your objects to scale on axes independently, add a combined XYZ node here, set the unconnected values to 1, and now the arrow stretches towards the empty. Add a math node here, and you can adjust how the object stretches. To set the scale of each axis at the same time manually, just use a value node. Makes it a little quicker. You could also use a random value or anything else you can think of to make this better suit your project. Also if you want your original plane object to show up as well, add a join geometry node at the end here, and connect the initial geometry to it. This is all pretty quick to set up, easily customizable, and hopefully will give you some ideas. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. If you'd like to help the channel grow, share the video. We also have a Patreon. Thank you again. Stay safe. I love you all. Goodbye. Oila.